Sir next story on my father's side of the family's ranch we had hundreds of surwalo, plums, trees like walking distance from my gramps aunt's house. Surwalo trees are very climbable, one of my gramps favorite char was to climb up and collect the fruits in buckets so they could sell in the market. After a long day him and cousins still like to climb around the trees and play Tarzan, eat surwalas etc, even though they are warned not to stay too late. It's not even too dark, sky is beautiful sunset red at around 6, and the cool breeze makes them want to stay longer. Then it begins happening. It's raining surwalas, like hundreds of ripe ones at a given second. Kid Gramps and his cousins get down from the trees and get pelted with surwalas on the ground. From the trees they see toddler shaped silu weights chucking plums at them. Like a few dozen toddler gnomes swinging and pelting shit at them at the red dawn sky, Kid Gramps and cousins run back home, still getting pelted by plums meters away from the trees. Oh that are the Shinex, Gramps aunt explained to him, they are like little men who live in the woods and probably do own the whole place. Gramps and cousins from time to time got pelted at when they walk in the tall grass areas. Sometimes their homes got pelted at with ripe plums during the sunsets, when their homes are like kilometers away from the nearest Surwalo. Little Duende fell in love with my great grand aunt once, back then when she was a 20-ish looker, sometimes at night she felt like some tiny hands were grabbing her ass. Her father didn't like that so she waited while she was sleeping on a hammock and waited for the Duende to come, caught the pervert in a sack and beat him against the tree. Making sure not to kill him, just to annoy him, so that his Duende family won't come seeking revenge. Pervert Duende learned his lesson and my great grand aunt Luz was never molested again. Last one before good night, ranch party celebrating quinceanera, boys hate that shit so the elder ones slip out and go walk towards store for snacks, get back from store on the way there two figures on the road, coming nearer it becomes extremely clear that it's like two migots in coat situation like four migots total. They get out a hearty chuckle and even go up to shake their hairy hands, at handshake distance they find out it's three midgets in each coat, rolling on the floor laughing, like really good duendas just like to play these tricks, later find out that uncle's good expensive coats were stolen while drying out. Just one short one then, uncle drives building materials with truck going from village to village, one night gets window smashed in with flying rocks, those little fuckers ill show em right takes rifle and chases after giggling midgets in the dark, shots fired, comes back to truck and sees the wooden loads burning in a fire. Flip here. Duende stories are also common in the Philippines, even had a popular movie back in the 80s. They appear in different colored clothes depending if they are kind or somewhat evil, here's my experience. Our house had two floors before, first floor had the dining room and bathrooms while the second floor had the bedrooms and TV rooms. Was in high school back then, had to wake up early for something I can't remember, going down groggily to staircase, past the dining room onto the sink to wash my face, as I passed the dining room two duendas were climbing onto the dining table from a chair, like one was standing on the chair, with clenched hands as the other duende was stepping on the other one's hands to reach the table. Still half asleep at that time so I shrugged it off as, meh, when I realized what I just saw, I took a look at the table again and no one's there. But the chair was in the exact place where the duendas were standing parents made sure that chairs are on the side of the wall after meals and this was the only chair that was on the table at that time. Also noticed a fruit basket on the table, did not even bother asking my mom when she woke up if a fruit was missing. Okay X. I was obsessed with Goatman slash Skinwalker slash Mimicry stories for a while but I haven't looked in a while. And then this happened to me last night and now I literally cannot sleep or stop shitting my pants due to its proximity to my house. 3. Try to green text as much as I can, but first background. I am 21 and a college senior from CT. While I live in a semi-rural area, about 20 minutes to closest supermarket slash fast food, I go to school in Washington DC. Not the nice part, either. The part where crackheads are a real thing and cops are reassuring rather than troublesome. I've definitely seen some shit in my day. It would be good to mention here that I'm not some glandular freak but I'm about 6 feet 1 inch and 240 a lot of muscle but lord knows I could drop 15 pounds, I love to smoke pot get drunk and eat sumi. Being the good student that I am, I picked a real major, accounting, and I interned for a meat sized PR firm doing accounting bitch work and getting paid $20 an hour. College is expensive as fuck though so I deliver pizzas at night after the office closes. It's a cheap, drunk food kind of pizza place that has an absurdly large delivery radius and is around 20 minutes from my house, 5 minutes from the beach. 
My place is north of there and we deliver probably another 15 minutes past my house. I'm actually typing this at work in between examining the fine print on our client contracts to ensure we are charging them every penny we can cheat bastards, so basically, the further north you go from the pizza place, the more rural it gets. I work until close and this occurs around 9.45 pm, be me, in the back, folding pizza boxes like a good little corporate bitch, counter girl comes back with a delivery slip. She tells me the customer sounded weird on the phone, kind of like he was talking through a fan or through his hands and that he was almost like gurgling. We'll continue. My DC experience instantly makes me think crackhead, although around here it's way more likely to be some benzo freak or painkiller addict, automatically assuming some weird interaction will occur, look at address, see it isn't kind of bumblefuck. I'm a little mad cause I don't want to drive that far but fuck it. It's the weirdest ticket I've ever seen, guy ordered a large pizza with anchovies, ground beef, ham, sausage, pepperoni etc, literally $15 worth of extras, I go ask the counter girl if it's right, she says she thinks so, she couldn't really make it out though so she said she did her best, she's like 16 so I cut her some slack, assume she was daydreaming and called the number back, phone rings 5, 10, 20, 30 times, no answer, hang up, call again, phone goes right to the number you have dialed does not have a voice mailbox that has been set up yet, goodbye. Okathan.jpg, manager decides to just make the pizza as ordered and proceed from there, deliver a pizza, to a hilariously obese and blackout drunk couple invited me in for drinks but I don't drink or smoke when I work, hope someone else took weird pizza. Surprise no one did it's my turn, begrudgingly take the pizza and get in my car, enter address into phone. It's on a side street adjacent to a park locals call open space which despite the name is about 500 acres of straight woods, it's about 25 minutes away, basically the edge of our range, put on some dubstep, judge me, and crank my turbo subi, judge me more, out to this road, if you're not from a rural area, this can be hard to explain, winter in the woods is scary, there is never a single sound, ever, unless there is something larger than a cat walking around, it's you in dead silence, finally get to address, there are a few houses on the street, but they sit on probably 5 acres so they are spaced out a fair amount, looking for number 1134. I pass a 1130, then a long long stretch of nothing, then a 1144, wtf.jpg continue. Yes? Lurking? Proceed. Go on damn it. Your bait work now proceed. I just want to get this over with and get the next delivery without getting stabbed by some pillhead over a fucking pizza, call the number, rings rings stops ringing, Therese no sound but instead kind of like a buzzing or a humming, it's hooked up to my car stereo and it's getting louder and louder until I just hang up because I don't want it to ruin my speakers, windows are fogging up cause at this point and pulled over between those two houses, right when I roll the windows down I am overcome by the odor of decaying trash, like driving through Newark NJ, Fucking gross so I put the car in first and I start pulling towards the next house. At the end of the, the driveway Teresa stanchion with a light on top, gonna pull into this house and knock and ask if maybe they gave the wrong number over the phone. Makes sense for a pillhead. I'm probably 100 feet away when I see someone step out of the darkness into the light at the bottom of the driveway. Dude it's the fucker that ordered. Expecting this guy to be all over the fucking place, leaning over and being fucked up. Guy isn't that fucked. Stop the car about 10 feet from him black coat that looks 3x too big for him even though Hess probably got 5 inches on me, don't look at him at first, getting pizza out of car and getting ticket and change as I talk, hey sir sorry about the wait and the calls this is pretty far, no response, realize I should be watching him considering the signs, the smell is still pretty pungent but I know it's not trash day, I get the pizza on the roof of my car. He is standing under the light on the opposite side of my car, so I got out of my driver's seat and went to driver rear to get pizza, put pizza on roof of driver rear, guy is probably 10 feet away from passenger rear, finally pay enough attention to get a good look at him, giant tall, no shoes, ripped up jeans, stains everywhere, big jacket is mentioned, look at his face. Sunken eyes, can't even see them with the light continued. Lurking. Getting real sketched out cause guy hasn't moved or said a word, stop the process and just stare at the guy, he is staring right at me with those freaky fucking eyes, his head is sort of bobbing side to side, but not in any fluid sense at all, kind of like a car door, like how it stops at halfway open, then you give it another shove and it stops at all the way open, 
I watch his head do this in no real pattern for probably 10 seconds, starting to get really uneasy between the stench and the head thing and the eyes and the not fucking answering, I stand frozen and so does he. Without breaking eye contact I take my phone out of my pocket and hold it level with the roof so I can look at the guy and my phone at the same time, go to recent calls. Call the number for the guy, call it. Phone starts ringing but I hear no phone anywhere, then out of the quiet of the woods. I hear, faintly, so so faintly, a fucking cell phone ringing back in there maybe 50 or 100 yards away. This is my kicking myself for not getting my CC yet, this is me almost shitting myself. The guy's just standing there still doing the head thing but I swear I see that fucker smile, finally get the courage to speak, uh, can you please come get this? Also I think you may have dropped your phone when you were hiding a body or whatever in the woods, nervously laugh, still thinking maybe this guy dug too deep into the prescription bottle or found some PCP or some shit, I see his mouth open, head still bobbing, feet planted to ground, he makes sort of a low guttural, quick grunt, then a high grunt, then a low grunt, they are sort of soft, kinda like someone clearing their throat, I've shut the rear passenger door at this point and am ready to book it to the driver's seat if I got to, just as I go to call that phone again I hear words, the phone's not mine, the pause between the and phone's not was way too long, phone's not literally sounded like one word, mine came off an octave higher continued, for some reason I am imagining the protagonist from hatred for this story, not even an edgy teen, my mind is defcon 5 like just full panic attack, Knees are weak. I am literally about to peace out. Push the pizza to the far side of the roof away from me. Finally muster out, sir. You're freaking me the fuck out. I have a 45 and less than $20 on me. Please come take this so I can leave. When I say this the head bobbing stops. His eyes are dark and burning a hole through my skull. Opens his mouth again. It was his. What? I say, stunned. It was his the phone was his. Greater than the guy comes towards the car. Not a step but like one huge muscle spasm that propels him forward. The phone was his, he repeats, I am on the verge of tears at this point. Standing next to open driver's side, pizza is on roof over passenger rear door. Guy jerk jumps once closer to the car. The phone is not his anymore, L blubber wordless and then gathering man balls I scream. I am gonna call the fucking cops and blow your fucking drug addict head off if you don't get the fuck out of here. I see this fucker smile this creepy fucking smile and without moving his mouth I hear him say in a completely different voice. A voice I've never heard before, go away. Stop following me. I will call the police. In one big jerky motion the thing reaches forward, takes the pizza off the top of the car and places a couple round things that I later identify as quarters on the roof surrounded by dark liquid that spreads over the roof. I don't even think just get in the car and peel out down the road. Leave the hot sleeve for the pizza. Leave the shit on the roof, don't even close the door all the way. I go down the road at about 80 for a quarter mile then pull a U-turn cause I don't wanna get even more lost with this psycho here. Whip down the road past the place where he was nothing. Finally get to the end of the road, there's a stop sign to merge with the a main road look right to make sure it's clear. Look left. This thing's face is 12 inches from my own when I turn, tactically shit myself. Peel down road continued. Fucking hell op hurry up. Come on up. Finally make it back to pizza place, shaking like bloody hell, smoke a joint just to calm me down which I never do when I'm working, I walk in the front door of pizza place hey and on that guy at the open space house just called back. He said you forgot some food but he only ordered the pizza right? He said come back Ike, I start crying, look at my phone which had been thrown throughout the car with my driving, 14 fucking missed calls from that number, literally in tears, all the voicemails are empty except the last one, all I can hear is ragged breathing and those low gruntings, fucking bawling my eyes out in front of this hot ass counter girl and I don't even give a fuck, sit for 10 minutes and calm down, remember the change on the roof, go out to car and turn on flashlight, the roof of my car was covered in the most viscous weird liquid but it smells like blood and I throw up immediately, in the panel gap between my trunk and the end of my rear window I find the quarters, Covered in the same maple syrup thick goop blood shit and stuck to it are soft little chunks of what I can only imagine is tissue. Go to open my car and my blood turns to fucking ice. There is a single line of blood going from the front quarter panel to the driver's side door. The the fucking thing tried to open my motherfucking door when it was next to me at the stop sign. Tactically cry and poop my pants more. I go back in. Tell counter girl to try and call the number again. She tries over and over and over but the phone goes right to voicemail. 
Next morning I give the number to my uncle who is a police captain a few towns over says the number is from a burner phone, paid in cash, basically untraceable and it appeared to be off now, I sleep with the lights on now. It'll be lurking for comments or suggestions or something like is this fucker gonna stalk me and kill me or call me again and fucking terrified. Sounds like a 9 slash walker case indeed. Let's get a note thread going? I'll start, be 16, be living in backwoods of South Carolina, hear stories from local kids of creepy stuff happening in forest about 2 miles from my new house, decide to check it out, can't be that scary, right? Grab pistol, knife, and flashlight and head out into dense forest, starts getting dark, turn on flashlight, heavy fog all of a sudden rolls in bringing a smell of copper, and burned hair, hairs on back of neck start to stand on end, start hearing whispers and giggles, hear something running around in woods near me, hear it get louder. No. Closer, turn around to see something crawling extremely fast low to the ground on four legs. But seem to have arms and legs like human, fire a shot right into its back, and can see blood splatter and gunshot wound, lets out a blood curdling screech and retreats into woods, fog lits and smell suddenly goes away, nope. Beta max all the way home, get home and there it is right in my driveway, runs towards me, and I shoot at it, but the bullet doesn't fire, I'm guessing it was a dud, it jumps up and all I can see is its huge white eyes, black out, and wake up on top of dad's car with dad over me trying to wake me up, my head hurts like a bitch, and my ears are ringing, tell dad about what happened in woods and he just laughs, and tells me it was nothing, all goes normal for about another 3 hours when, dad says hey Jake, mind getting me those steaks out of the fridge, I just look at him and say, dad, my name is Anon, not Jake? just looks at me like he is full of hatred directed towards me, give him steaks and he just goes into his room with them. Uncooked, comes out an hour later with the package and throws it away, I don't even think about asking, at 11 pm he tells me to go to bed, which is odd, because it is a Friday, and he doesn't usually care when I stay up. But I do as told and go into my room, at around 3.15 my door opens sits my dad. I say nothing and pretend to be asleep, that smell of copper returns to the air, and I feel sick to my stomach. My dad sits on the edge of my bed and just looks at me for what I would say to be about 30 minutes, he then mumbles something under his breath, and a voice I didn't recognize. My blood turned cold and I just laid there, when he got up and left my heart dropped and I just laid there until morning, the next morning I wake up and my dad is asleep on his lazy boy recliner, and his nose is bleeding, I wake him up and am still spooked I ask him about the blood, and he has no idea where it came from, I ask him about the night before and he has no idea what I'm talking about and he doesn't remember waking me up either, my heart drops. When he states that it was still Friday, when I know for a fact that it is Saturday, but he argues with me until I show him my phone with the date, at this point we are both freaked, I've never ventured out into the woods since then. And nothing strange has happened since then. Except sometimes I will hear the front door open and shut a few times during the night. In the 1950s our comrades decided to do an experiment, Five of our glorious comrades were to be stuck in a room for 30 days, breathing stimulant gas, awake the whole time the first few days, our comrades showed no signs of change. The fifth day, they started to wall over the windows so the scientists couldn't see. Screams could be heard from inside. When more of our comrades opened the door, they saw the men had removed their skin and major organs. They were executed on the spot for making a mess. Such is life in Mother Russia. One day I was drinking vodka admiring my hairy chest in mirror when I noticed slip of paper. Paper say, hello, please respond he throw paper in garbage. Paper do not talk. The next day I be looking for pictures of bear on internets. I see small slip of paper under keyboard. Again say, hello, please respond. I rip paper and write who is you. Then KGB break down door and put sack over my head. KGB do not tolerate comrades talking to traitorous ghosts such as life in Moscow. It was wartime in Mother Russia. Supplies were short and food was scarce. Lady walked down street. Lady see blind man trying to walk through crowd. Lady asked blind man if he'd be needing help. Blind man asked her to deliver letter to his comrade. Lady walks to deliver letter, like any trustworthy comrade. Suddenly KGB stopped lady. KGB read letter. Letter says attack begins today. Mother Russia falls women is shot twice in head and then decapitated for being a traitor to Mother Russia such as life in Moscow. My family moved to Siberia. We have new house. Family explore new house and decide where to store our bear meat and vodka. 
House of Secret Room. I take room from my sister because I want. Secret Room have very tiny door for little comrades to play. At night I hear tiny scratching sound on wall. Not like nails, softer. Happen every night. Sister start talking to self while in secret room. Says she have new friend girl. Girl draws on wall. Nighttime I hear scratching again. I hear noise from secret room. I see shape sitting. Sister? I go in and see. It is a ghost girl from many generation past. I scream father come in and beat ghost girl for breaking into house and ruining walls. Such is life in Moscow. I need money for vodka and bear meat. See ad in paper for experiment. I go there. Scientists do test me. They put me in room. They say to imagine a comrade exactly like myself. Difficult it is. Days pass, comrade become easier to imagine. Doctor play music to hurt concentration and tell me make comrade play games and talk to myself. When I outside doctor office, comrade still follow. As weeks pass he follow me more and more. He start to grow claws like bear, and dark eyes like the morning after too much vodka. I ask scientist help. Scientists no help. I ask friend help. Friend no help and then make phone call. KGB break down door and put potato sack on my head. KGB do not tolerate use of the imagination like capitalist scum. Such is life in Moscow. Comrade decide to stay in hotel one night. He talked to front desk and receive room key with complimentary bear meat and vodka. Front desk comrade say, do not go in room 3. I be confused but say nothing. Only coward comrades ask questions. I look in keyhole. White woman standing in corner. This shameful pig is being lazy and not working for the motherland. How insolent. While watching bear documentary in room, one hair noise through wall from room 3. I consider calling KGB to have them removed but no, KGB do not tolerate crybabies. I go outside to listen. I look through keyhole again. Only see red, the glorious color of Mother Russia. I feel proud of my neighbors. I ask front desk comrade about this. KGB put sack over head and throw me over bridge. KGB do not tolerate comrades who question the motherland's color. Such is life in Moscow. Once I hear story about girl in Chaplikin. She was asleep in her bed, when she feel lick in her hand. She thinks it is dog and goes to sleep. Next morning, she finds note on dresser with dead head of dog. It says comrades can lick too. She screams. Father comes upstairs, takes belt off and beats her. Moral of story is daughters should not yell in house like peasant. House is not Siberian pigsty. I worry daughter will never find good Russian husband. Such is life in Moscow. One night, comrade Yuri Volkov finds a picture. It shows capitalist dog with smile on face. What is it so happy about, thinks Yuri. It deserves to be shot for insolence toward the motherland. But Yuri soon becomes sick. His wife is worried, and doctor says is not a virus, but happy capitalist dog did this. When Yuri shows his wife picture of insolent dog, she faints and Yuri feeling better. Yuri goes to show picture to his friends, but they report brother Yuri to KGB. He is shot for spreading capitalist dog propaganda. Motherland does not tolerate such behavior. Such is life in Moscow. One day in the motherland a comrade was bleeding. He goes to vodka store and gets everything messy. He goes to buy some bear meat and fills up elevator with blood. He turned everything glorious red color of motherland. Government send him space program, beat dirty capitalists to space. KGB do investigation and he is you. KGB are on their way with potato sack for head and bear to kill. Such is life in Moscow. Come home from my standard 32 hour shift in the vodka and bear claws ink factory. Enjoy some sweaty furry sex with my hot ass unibrow bearded female companion comradess. Suddenly telegraph comes in, it says, don't you harass my daughter stop you filthy piece of capitalist scum stop I call KGB on you stop tell it to comradess. She says it can't be her father because he was executed by KGB years ago for being sober. Then WHO was telegraph comrade. Such is life in Moscow. One night mother and father decide to go to Moscow to buy vodka. Parents call babysitter to keep an eye on kids. When babysitter arrives kids are asleep in bed. Babysitter want to read Russian poetry in first floor but no electricity because parents don't want kids to read communist manifesto all night. 
So she calls parents to ask permission to read in parents' bedroom. Father agrees. Babysitter go to room but Big Lennon sculpture is looking funny at her. Babysitter calls parents to ask permission to cover Lennon's sculpture with blanket. Father says to babysitter to take the kids and leave house. Babysitter ask why and father says. We don't have a Lennon sculpture in our bedroom. Next day written in papers that parents and babysitter found dead. KGB killed parents for not having a Lennon sculpture and KGB killed babysitter for wanting to cover Lennon sculpture with blanket. Such is life in Moscow. Item hash, SCP-173 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures, SCP-173 is to be kept in shed behind farm. Three strong communist men must drink liter of vodka before enter. Two must stare at item, one must continue drink vodka. Description, move to shed after wooden pen freeze and break during cold Soviet winter. Shed is also wood, but with paint sometimes. SCP-173 is extremely hostile like red-faced Americans, is also coward. Neither will make move while strong Soviet men have watchful eye. No one blink, on punishment of beating with cold leather. Object enjoy snap neck, like American commando pig. If object allowed to move, all will be sent to cold Siberia for re-education. Personnel report sound of stone scraping when creature is alone. This is dutiful Russian work ethic. If sound stops, Subject to be beaten with iron rods, like child. Floor is covered in sweat and blood, like normal Soviet household. Shed must be cleaned every two weeks. Kept much cleaner than most Soviet households such as life in Moscow. Legend is being going like this. You entering bathroom and standing in front of mirror. Turning candles off and, while being in front of mirror, spinning rapidly, you chanting Leon Trotsky Leon Trotsky Leon Trotsky Leon Trotsky several times, while catching glimpses of self on mirror. It is said that eventually you be seeing image of Leon Trotsky on mirror. Upon exiting bathroom you are being arrested by KGB for believing in existence of Leon Trotsky, whom the party has proven never existed such as life in Moscow. Soviet peasant filled with burning desire to read for glory of Soviet Russia. One day peasant go to Soviet bookstore and sees book with skull on cover he asks owner how much is book, and owner responds 80 rubles. However, owner tell peasant never read last page, or else doom shall fall upon him. Peasant reads all book in one night as dark book of capitalism about by evil man, John Deere, talking of automated machinery and air-conditioned tractors, many horrors in book indeed. Yet peasant does not read last page, for he has fear in his heart. One night it storms however, and the man is bored. He finally gathers up enough Soviet courage to read last page, dispelling superstition, for he has faith in the party as soon as he reads last page, man gasps. Book originally 20 rubles. The owner was Jewel. Mother and father get little tired from building communism, so they wanted to go to Moscow to buy vodka. They call most trusted babysitter. When babysitter arrives, children already sleep in beds. Babysitter just sits around and makes sure everything good with children. Later that night, Babysitter gets bored and goes to read Marx, but she can't read downstairs because there's no electricity, parents don't want children reading Marx all night long. So, she calls parents and asks if she can get candles to read Marx in their room. Of course, the parents say it okay, but babysitter has one final request. She asks if she could cover up Lenin statue outside the bedroom window with blanket or cloth, because it makes her nervous. Phone line is silent for a moment, and father who say, take children and get out of house. We will call Milita. We do not have Lenin statue. Militia find all three of house occupants dead because KGB kill them for trying to cover Lenin statue. Then militia arrest parents for not having Lenin statue. Such is life in Moscow. In Russia, coffin has pipe for air, and bell with string. If man is true Soviet, he does not die. When buried, yells for undertaker and rings bell. Bell rings. Is no wind. Undertaker asks, are you Lady Gorbachev? Voice says, Da. Born winter of 1927. Da. Gravestone says, Died the 20th of February 1957. Niet, I'm still living. I'm sorry, but as August. In June, ground will thaw. You must wait for June. And woman as true Soviet, waits for June. Such is life in Mother Russia. I've been having the same dream every other night for the last four months and I haven't told anyone. In the dream only one or two things ever change but everything else is always the same does this mean anything? 
So this is what happens. I wake up on the edge of a raft, in the middle of the ocean, no land in sight, and the ocean is calm, no waves, no white tips, just smooth. Raft is eight planks, thick and rounded off like logs on the underside, with no sail. There's a man wearing a robe made out of white feathers that only covers the lower half of his body, and his torso is emaciated. Light brown skin. He never has eyes, but he is always staring off to the water. The raft is moving despite no rowing or waves. He's silent unless I ask him something. For some reason, 99% of the time I can't say anything and my voice catches in my throat, and every time I fail talking he gives me an odd look before looking back onto the water. Occasionally, I can talk, but so far for only three questions. I can ask these questions every dream but so far only these three. Greater than where am I? When I ask him that, he says fear not in a really guttural voice and nothing else. Greater than who are you? When I ask him that, he says I'm here in the same voice and then smiles at me before looking back at the water. Greater than where are we going? When I ask him that, he always says Damascus. Then he pulls this welded together ring thing that has eyes engraved all around it out of his robe slash skirt thing and hands it to me. If I try asking him this specific question again, I instantly wake up, unlike the other two where he just ignores me if I've asked him it more than once the same dream. This has happened every other night for the last four months. Describe me the dream. Sounds like you need to go to Damascus. Get your ass to Damascus nigga. You what? Welded rings with eyes like this? It seems Paul wants you to go to Damascus. What is that? It's an angel. And on you're the second coming of Christ, don't waste it. Yeah, exactly like that, but it was small, like half the size of a baseball in volume, and it was a dull bronze color, what is that? Haha <laughs> what? Are you going to convert to Christianity? What the fuck? I thought I was just dreaming about some old man on a raft. Are you saying that I've been given biblical dream for the past four months? I haven't even read the Bible or know what any of these things are so how can I be dreaming them if my subconscious can't recognize them? Try writing them down if you can't speak them. I don't know, I'm still not convinced it's more than a crazy dream. I would just take a plunge into the ocean and invite him as well. Since it's obvious only some questions can be asked. Can you guys help me come up with some basic questions to ask him? Here are some that I've tried but don't come out of my mouth. What's your name? Am I dreaming? Why Damascus? Why do I keep having this dream? Are we on the ocean? How is the raft moving? I would just take a plunge into the ocean and invite him as well. Yeah. Ask about his eyes. And you should definitely convert to Christianity and look into shit. Nothing to write with. It's the raft, the man. Me and my shirt and boxers that I slept in, it's always what I was sleeping in, and the wheel angel ball thing. Tried that once. If I start moving with the intention of jumping off the raft or even attempting to touch the water I lock up until I decide to stop. I LL try to remember that next time and ask. That's not a bad idea, it'll do that. Oh, that's another one I've tried, won't work. It's always what I was sleeping in well sir. Got to sleep with a pen and notepad strung around your neck. How about, who am I? That dude is taking you to Damascus for something big. He must know who are you. I wish I had cool prophetic dreams like you. No you don't every time I wake up I feel exhausted and cold. Like I didn't get any sleep at all and my blankets didn't do anything despite being under a sheet and two comforters. Take into a raft, wearing the clothes that you slept in every time, angelic symbolism, Reference to Damascus, one of the cities to fall during the end times, Isa 17 to one the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap, you're cold and tired when you wake up, you physically are not allowed to do something that would or might harm you like jumping into the ocean I got some news for you pal, you ain't dreaming. Oregon up my fucking face when this fucking thread. Ima Sheriff in Oregon near Mellor Lake. We've had two reports of man hunting. The first time I was two miles away from Ruby Ridge, there was reports of flares, gunfire, and yelling, me thinking it's a redneck shoot, I go in with M16A1, fuck year Vietnam patrol rifle, 210 rounds 223, Colt 1911 with 60 rounds, after the Gulf of Anal about possible combat situations, 
Kant in next post it started as a rumor around here seven years ago when I was a junior in high school. ISR. Told us that the woods we often go in has seen a large number of disappearances in recent time, his older brother included, and to be careful. Six months later, two bodies were found with a crossbow bolt through one's chest, in the heart, and the other was found with a bullet in the skull. They has armbands, with black and who's in each of them, and they were well camouflaged. One was eyed as the senior's older brother. He was round with a SKS carbine, bayonet fixed, with one round in the chamber, three missing from the magazine. Reports found blood on the bayonet. The other was it as a dot man from Oklahoma. He was found with a wasser with an empty chamber, and a full magazine in his hand. He also had an empty airsoft dot callister of 2000 BBS, with a wick inside it. It was filled with 6 ounces gunpowder, 15 small nails, and 200 steel BBs. It was a crude frag. Grenade. The bullet turned out to be a 30 to 40 from a Krog rifle. Part 2 slash slash so back up is 14 miles away and sighting near a cop car isn't the brightest idea, I go in now all the commotion was the previous night at 10 so just now go out because the guy who called it in was scared after hearing all this and called again near a stream I found a rucksack with 2 AK mags, gauze, 12 ounces of booze, 2 bottles of water, and a pack of reds. First red flag, then I saw 3 sets of footprints lead through a trail, they looked a day old, they lead to a campsite that was still warm, at the camp I found 5 243 shell casings, 8 9mm casings, a 26.5 orange flare, a flare casing, and a sign of a scuffle, dirt kicked around like a fist fight. At the top of Ruby Ridge I found a bloodied rag, 6 308 shell casings that look like they've been through a G3, and a note on a piece of lined paper that said, I won, in caps and horizontally, finding all this in 30 minutes and the fact the fire was still warm I was DEFCON 1. When five other guys got there we had detectives, show up, everybody knew what happened, the most dangerous game had just been played, to this day the winner are is still at large. The second time was the same motherfucking place when we got the call from an anonymous caller at 11pm our rudely formed SWAT team rolled out at 9am the next morning to steamroll those motherfuckers. When we showed up it was creepy as shit. There was sounds of people moving around, but nobody was around, I guess the winner from the last go around wised up. There were four location of interests, the first was a lone 1911 magazine, the second was a wallet with only cash and nothing else, no id. The third was blood, grey matter, and bits of skill splattered on trees, it came from a woman. Third, was a man, obviously deranged, you know that thousand yard stare. He was just walking around with a 1911 when we asked him if he was alright he raised the handgun and we light him up, the last one was the most chilling piece. There was another piece of paper next to a AR-15 mag. It read, the answers lie with the spared man. This was the last sporting event. Goodbye. To this day I have never trust the woods here in Oregon. Oregon op answers a couple questions from what I understand some people are willing participants. Hence the signal flares to set off the beginning of the match. IT almost seemed like the first one was a coordinated consenting death match. The second one was just plain weirder we think the woman was collateral damage. Who knows who else died if most of the bodies weren't found. Never mind I think I found them after sifting through several Innerwoods threads and control plus F human hunting. I'll repost the ops posts for the hunting story I kind of explained, op hunting with a buddy, we both went up on a ridge to make camp. I think the ridge is actually called Black Hills Ridge. We sat there and made a campfire, watching the surrounding areas. Suddenly, about one mile away, a flare pops off. We watch it fly up slowly and float for a minute, as it illuminated it in orange. About 750 yards away, a green one flies up. We watch this, perplexed. About 200 meters dot in front of is, a white flare goes up, followed by a yellow. We yelled down to where it was, asking if they needed help. No response, so we pop the green flare, we carry them all the time, a lot of people do around here. The flares fall, and then something freaked us out. We heard a whizzing sound, and some rocks exploded. We fell to behind an overhand and waited all night in security shifts. In the morning, we went to the flare positions. In one, we found 12 spent casings of 270, and one in 45 ACP. In another, a fire pit and rucksack. In the third, one, single magazine from what I assume was a PSL, and no casings. The third was only a fire, and the spent case from the flare. I think that some people were hunting one another. 
I think player 4 won. I found nothing indicating he lost or won, but I'm assuming he actually used a bow, as I found only 3 ammunition types. Human hunters are people whom gather in groups and hunt one another. The largest I have ever heard of was 42 people in 7 teams. Apparently, 34 people died, they use flares to designate the start, and, sadly, the flare colors they use were colors for lost, orange, medical attention needed, red, fire warning, yellow and a response, green. This would be a gold mine of fresh content if I understood any of it. I am listening to this and heard a good story just now. We'll translate in English. There were a few friends who worked and lived in the same property, their houses were spaced pretty well, each had a good amount of land to themselves, one day a staircase appears and the storyteller was a witness by himself, staircase is on the wide space that is his property, he hides but is curious, he tries to get closer but is afraid, sees a light and after a while it becomes apparent that it is a spaceship, a few beings come out, they look exactly like humans but are wearing strange robes, the man invites them over for some food, the aliens accept and come in. The aliens then invite him over to their UFO, the man goes in for what seems like a few hours, he describes it all vaguely as just beautiful and like nothing ever seen before, they're all having fun like pals, man gets nervous and bolts when the aliens put their guard down, runs down the stairs and home, family tells him he was gone for 5 years. Another one about a woman, wake up to the feeling of someone grabbing my leg, absolute shock, become reserved and weary that night, this persists and feel pain in leg would wake up frustrated, often cursing and telling it to stop, grabbing just want stop no matter what, one day wake up catch a man on top of me, tell mother but she says that it is only because I am tired, but admits it's not normal, tell friend who happens to be superstitious, she takes me to see a white witch, white witch tells me to take a new photo, white witch hands me a white candle and white coconut and tells me to leave it in my room tonight, bring it back the next day, white witch says she senses the dead reaching out to me, it impured the candle and coconut, mentioned to the witch that once heard a hammer banging, and sounds of someone running down the stairs. Only me and my brother experience this story ends with no conclusion sadly. This one from a Dominican, these past two weeks I have been having trouble sleeping, tossing and turning, unable to sleep, I would like someone is jumping on top of me as I laid in bed, I could not sleep during the daytime either because of the sun, cold sweats, discomfort all night. I would spend the entire night staring at my closet, as if expecting something to come out of it, one day something occurred that left me very, bird afraid, feeling diligent I tell myself I am going to sleep well tonight, not 15 minutes after closing my eyes do I feel the bed slowly shift, don't care. I must sleep, feel hand grab my hand, wake up and see the shade of a being, it quickly dashes into the closet, I will have to find a way to bless my room and rid that thing just so that I can sleep story ends in cliffhanger just like that. Story about someone's aunt, my aunt liked to stay at a certain estate, it was away from many villages, miles from the nearest house, she just felt the need to stay there, but the estate was plagued by spirits, supposedly many people were slaughtered on that site, and so the spirits were drawn to her home, my aunt admits she was terrified but she is brave, she will not let spirits scare her away from her estate, she heard noises, voices, and occasionally a woman screaming death threats, but my aunt persisted, on her part of the country electricity was still not a thing so candles were used, one night as she is about to sleep in her bed she hears footsteps, she worries that it may be burglars, wonders if it may be spirits instead, but now she hears footsteps inside her home, but how could that be? The door is shut with a lock from the inside, still laying in bed she becomes very afraid, as she lays feeling frantic, she feels someone enter her room and lay next to her, moments go by and she feels that this being next to her is very, very cold, they are shoulder to shoulder, a cold hand touches her, she gets up and lights a candle, the hand is not made out of flesh, but rather something that resembles skin, presumably she turns away, she feels that hand reach out and caress her face, the hand is intimate and it caress her for hours, finally she feels the spirit get up and march out, that is the last day she stayed in her estate, she assumes it was a man looking for a companion do you fags want me to keep translating. A few cousins and I went to hang out at my building's balcony. I brought with me a portrait of Jesus Christ, one of my cousins brought out some cookies, another cousin jokingly asked Satan to show himself, I took that seriously and felt afraid, so I left, I have forgotten my portrait of Jesus Christ so I went back to retrieve it, upon leaving the balcony the second time around I felt I was being watched and followed to my room, I even heard a few footsteps, 
As time went on I noticed my dolls moved out of place, and religious effigies appearing damaged. I told my mother about this but she dismissed me as crazy. This was only the beginning. Decorations from my tree kept falling off. Baby pictures shattering, loud thumps against the wall. I could not sleep at night, but this was only the beginning. One day I was reading the Bible, desperate for answers. Just then the lights went off. This enraged me. I left my room and came back with my medal of Saint Benito and a cross. And what I saw as I entered the room terrified me. It was a silhouette and the embodiment of a head of a bull. I ran away screaming, screaming towards the nearest church. Let this be a lesson to you all to not meddle with things you should NT. What I am about to tell you is my experience in the form of three short stories. My mother said that when my older sister was born my grandma came to see her. My grandma was so ecstatic to see her grand after. When I was born my grandma was waiting for us to get back from the hospital. She was so filled with joy to see me. But mother told her this is the last time she is allowed to see us. After banishing grandma, my mother was no longer able to get pregnant. One day I felt as if my grandpa wanted to see me. We have a gated in our porch so no one can get in. But I could have sworn I heard three knocks at our door. My mother told me it was my grandfather pleading to see us. But my mother would not allow them to visit my sister and I. When I was in kindergarten I used to wear a piece of rope around my waist. I liked to pretend it was a belt. I always slept with my day clothes on at night. My mother said one night she heard me inviting a witch to take me. When she came into my room she saw me sobbing uncontrollably. She could not comfort me and get me to stop. My grandma, who lived a good distance away, came over that night. Grandma said she felt alarmed. She knew I was feeling distressed and in danger. Grandpa took my rope belt off and told my mother to make crosses made out of the straw from a broom. Place a cross in every opening every window and door. After the final window was decorated with a cross I finally calmed down and stopped crying, as if I were cured with magic. Some weird stuff. I went to pick up my grandparents from a bus station at around 10 p.m. After placing their luggage in my truck we began to get seated comfortably. At this moment we began to feel this trip was not a good idea. That night we crashed at my grandpa's cousin's home nearby. Cousin had three children but a wife was nowhere to be seen. One of the daughters exclaimed that she simply went to the store. As it got late we all headed to sleep. That night we heard screams and whacking sounds coming from the kitchen. An aunt who also lived here went to investigate. There was a pale woman staring at a wall, banging her head against it. When she looked at her she let out an ungodly, horrible scream. She kept banging her head against the wall. Nobody explained to me or my grandparents what was going on. Everyone simply said we are staying at a different house for a while. I was later told the mother was possessed by the devil. Ah finally. A really good story. Here we go English translation. I live in an apartment complex full of old people. Most of them are Latinos. There is this one man named Juan who told me a story. Juan is ancient like everyone else in his neighborhood, in his 70s and a background of rampant drug use and alcohol. He talks to himself a lot. He is one of those schizos. Everyone in the apartment building looks at him as if he is strange. They all just assume he is crazy. The story Juan told me is about a man named Susano. Susan had a twin brother with whom he did not get along with very well. One day they are fighting, and the police come to announce that his brother is dead. Susano's brother died. The police mention his brother worshipped Satan. Susano used to be Juan's roommate. Susano would often talk to himself, argue with himself, and cry himself to sleep. When met with fear, Susano simply laughed. Juan just called him insane. One day Juan hears screaming. He goes to Susano's room, where he hears cursing and crying, to his surprise. Upon opening the door he saw Susano with his legs covered in scratches. Juan looks behind him and sees a mirror. On the reflection he seems someone who looks just like Susano, on top of him. After they calm down Juan asks Susano what happened. Susano exclaimed that his brother become very angry. Angry because I refused to commit suicide. Juan moved out and got a place of his own. Juan claims every time he walks by Susano's apartment he feels like he is being followed. That this is the story about my upbringing. In my house there is me, my parents and my 8-year-old sister. My mother's godmother came to our home to deliver a spirit of a girl to me. She did this so the spirit would protect me. Supposedly delinquents would break into our home to rob us. Well my mom did say we were robbed two times already. I got along with this spirit very well. Often we talked a lot and laughed together. Ultimately would be burglars got badly injured. I am 20 now and still friends with this spirit girl. I get along with her but, she doesn't like it when I associate with other people. She tried to kill one of my friends from university by throwing her down the stairs. I try not to bring friends over because of her. I live in fear knowing she is watching me. 
protecting me wherever I go. She constantly tries convincing my sister to kill herself. For this reason I am terrified of being kind towards my sister. I tried moving away on a few occasions, but nothing worked. She always does something to let me know she is there. It irks me knowing she is always there. At school I would catch glimpses of her walking down the hallway, keeping watch over me. She would wait for school to end and ecstatically join me as I make rounds towards home. I really hate living like this and wish she would leave me alone. Frankly I wait for the day this all ends. I had this one experience where I was almost abducted, B18, walking to friend's house to go drink and play some video games, he lives on the opposite side of the city, 45 minutes walk away, on my way there I have to pass a local park, normally pretty chill but a few gang incidents have resulted in kidnapping slash murders, it's about 8 when I'm walking through the park so it's dark, no one around except for 4 guys smoking at one of the benches near the soccer field, one of the guy asks wanna toke. I tell him no I'm not a smoker, I keep walking towards friend's house, I'm almost there, he lives two blocks from the underpass I was about to cross, a van comes up behind and slows down near me, same guys from the park, the same guy says maybe you like a drink instead while drinking a beer, tell him no and keep walking, they are driving slow enough to match my walking speed, I yell what the fuck do you want, the guy instantly changes from looking like has high slash drunk to being angry, he throws his beer at the floor and says get him, the door on the side of the van slides open and two of the guys get out, I instantly think him fucked, what do I do, all I have to protect myself is a pocket knife, I go to grab it from my inside pocket of my jacket, I think pretend it's a gun and leave my hand in my jacket giving the impression I have a gun, the two guys stop charging towards me, the guy that offered the drinks says leave him, looks at me and says next time you may not be so lucky, they speed off, I call TGE police and tell them a weird van tried taking me near the park, they say they will send a car to see scout the area for the van, they ended up catching them trying to pick up a 17 year old girl, they find drugs, alcohol, and a camera with pictures of kids slash teens they abducted completely nude and tied up I was really freaked out about how close I was to getting kidnapped. I don't walk at night here anymore especially in that area. I got one from my dad. Be dad, years ago and still young, him and friends pile into car for a road trip into Virginia, driving up, high into the mountains, woods, having a good time, it gets dark and there's a sudden heavy rainstorm, raining so hard that dad can't even see the road, let alone see to drive, drives blind for a while, sees a bright light up ahead, dad drives to light, thinking it was a street light, parks in front of light, sitting in car, waiting for rain to die down, when humanoid shadow enters light, dad and friends staring in awe of shadow, thinking dad crashed the car and they're seeing an angel, they keep looking at the shadow, rain finally dies down and see what it actually is, it's an old man, dad drove through this old man's yard and parked, right in front of his living room window, dad, friends and old man stare at each other for a second, dad backs up car, cuts two donuts in yard and floored it out of there. I have a few, about four years ago, it was approximately 12 am, live in a fairly quiet but dangerous area, reading a book in my lounge room by lamplight, see something suspicious through the slightly open curtains, it's a guy in my neighbor's yard, across the street, looking in his window, the fuck. After a few seconds this guy walks out of my view, decide to spy on him cause he was sus, he keeps on heading down the road checking people's windows slash cars and sometimes their front door, he comes onto my side of the street a fair way down, I decide to check it out, go grab my 22 magnum lever action rifle, hiding it behind my back, suddenly this guy appears out from a house and looks directly at me, he's walking with a limp I didn't notice before, not knowing what to do I go back inside and lock the door. Wake my fiancé up and tell her to ring the police, aim at the door, chest height, and tell her that if he tries to come in I'm going to unload through the door, hear crunching outside, my heart is racing, as it gets closer I hear the man say fuck, two cop cars rock up from both sides of the street cornering him, he's forced to surrender and gets taken and turns out he had a double barrel down his pants, and from what I was told he was actually found guilty of breaking and entering and murder. Supposedly he broke into some guy's house and murdered him and his mom and dad while they were all sleeping. I'll post more in a second. You guys wanna hear a real spooky story? One that actually happened. This one still fucks with me, be many years ago, young boy probably 5 or 6 or something. My grandpa had this old trailer house, we were visiting at the time and the parents were all out in the living room area watching TV. Me and cousins were in master bedroom playing around on the bed. We were playing whatever game it is kids play at that age and had the lights out, out of nowhere my cousin begins yelling at us all to get behind him, 
has practically petrified looking in the direction of the windows, scramble behind him and look at the windows to see what had startled him so badly, I remember details quite well, windows were open, it was summertime, first I saw the white curtains moving with the wind, then I saw him, man standing there, but there was no color to him at all, like the typical see-through ghost you always see in movies and shit, just completely see-through and void of any color, he was wearing a suit and he had this sad expression, I remember him looking very sad, I immediately freaked the fuck out and ran for the door, we had it closed, the door was near impossible to open, we were all trying our hardest to open the door, cousins were right behind me trying to get that fucking door open, finally get it open and we all run to each of our parents, crying, freaking out, of course parents don't believe children saying they saw a ghost, why would they but it gets creepier, this is the part that really gets to me because I'm a skeptic, I don't typically believe in these kind of things, but this part makes my spine tingle every time I think about it. Years later, probably 11 or 12 now, watching one of those Ghost Hunter TV shows with my mom, reminds me of said story, I mentioned something about seeing a ghost, she's intruged and asks me to tell story, I do, she goes pale backstory mom has a sister, my aunt, who became retarded at a young age due to a severe fever, half. Continued two halves anyways, aunt is retarded, has mentality of five year old. Mom tells me that she liked grandpa's trailer, but there was one room she refused to enter, ever and would freak out if you made her go into the room, grandpa's master bedroom, turns out that my grandpa's neighbor, after his wife divorced and left him, had hung himself on the porch right outside my grandpa's trailer, deduce that the ghost we saw was him, things just click and I am genuinely freaked, tried asking my cousins if they remember, they don't that one was a real spook, I still don't know if what I saw was real, or if it was just kids with an overactive imagination, but the things my mom told me clicked together like puzzle pieces. Still makes me spooked to this very day. I will never forget what that fucker looked like, all sad and shit. When I was a teenager had a cell phone never used number, a few months after having numbers start to get a call at midnight a few times a week from a block number, half of the time I'd answer it to only be greeted with what sound like somebody running through woods with their phone in beside them or in pocket, this would last as long as I'd stay on the phone, after a month I get sick of it and start talking shit, as soon as I do I hear raspy breathing, at first I was happy it was something new then realized something was up, keep talking shit telling whoever was on the line they were going to regret disturbing my 12 am bubble baths with their stupid shit, few seconds later breathing stops and hear water running, what, start to think whoever this wants me to be afraid, fuck that I ain't scared of nobody, water sounds stop and begin to hear a strange sound can't place it, sound gets louder, Problem is I'm not only hearing it from the phone now but from the back part of the house. Realize it's the back door being fucked with. Get the idea to start laughing on the phone while I grab my dad's 12 gauge. Sound stop. They start laughing. Wasn't quite so bothered until they started laughing then I felt doom and wanted to panic. Decide fuck it not going to be a pussy. Go upstairs and open the studio's window that's the only way on the roof. Get up there quietly and walk towards the backyard. See a tall guy in all black standing in the middle of the backyard with cell phone to his ear laughing, shortly contemplate shooting him, he hangs up looks and does nothing but stare, tell him to fuck off before I kill his silly ass, he points up and yells out run, he turns around and bolts for the woods behind my house, I stand confused and a few moments later see two more people in all black run into the woods, that terrified me, told my dad who was out of town he flew back that night and set up booby traps everywhere, call stop nothing has happened since saw someone wrote similar to this got creeped again cause something similar happened to me be me 8 wake up in the morning go to watch some morning kid shows go there watch something in tv suddenly get sleepy so sleepy i lay on sofa and decide to sleep wake up in fucking hospital parents asking me how did i broke my fucking leg they tell me that i woke up they found me watching tv then we had some breakfast and i went out to play somehow i broke my leg and crawled back to home Dad found me and took me to hospital, do not remember any of those. Mine fucked, still after years my right leg is hurting before rain or sometimes don't feel it, and my walking changed my right leg leans to left when I walk. I rarely talk about this event, but since we are all anon here, here goes. Be me, around 15 years old. One of my friend's dad died, friend and his mom can't pay for the house anymore, have to move out. Me and another friend help with moving. There were more people helping that day aunts and uncles, friends of my friend's parents. Nothing out of the ordinary happening all day. Friend and his mom are pretty sad though. Dad dying and losing your home sucks. Anyway, things go smoothly. Loading up the truck, 
did the living room and all that, last stop, the master bedroom. The room my friend's parents used to sleep, just a regular bedroom. Big bed, a closet and this old wooden cabinet with glass doors. Pick related, not the actual closet, but close enough, at this point it's just me and my two friends in the room, room is on second floor. We decide to take the cabinet first. The top half was detachable so we wanted to take that off first, right at the moment we step towards the cabinet. I swear to god I get goosebumps just fucking writing this. We step towards the thing and the ghost of my friend's father rushing, gliding towards us. This smoky figure rushing towards us, face like he was angry and screaming. Sticking his hands out like he wants to fucking strangle us. All three of us fucking bolted out of that room. I think I didn't even touch the stairs to get down. Just fucking jumped down. Ran out of the house screaming. So everyone is just looking like what the actual fuck is going on. My friend that lost his dad just sat there pale staring into nothing. Like he just totally lost his fucking mind. We told the people there what we just saw. The mother goes totally nuts. Some guys go up there to check but see or find nothing. The rest finishes the moving the next day because my friend had to go to the hospital. He was never the same again after that. Like always, blank, inside on medication. Up here dumping another story to get it moving, dude rolled into shop, dodgy as fuck, picks up a one liter bottle of Gentleman Jacks, I stand in front of door, as he obviously proceeds to leave without paying, nah man, it's not free, pay or leave it on the counter she does the usual what? What cunt? Etc etc, he can't swing because he has to hold this Gentleman Jacks in his hand, as I'm talking he starts shaking his head at me, think WTF? I wasn't asking him questions and it was just an unusual thing to do, kind of walk towards him so he's further in the shop, back him towards the counter, rip the bottle out of his hand and throw it onto the chair behind the counter, pick up bottle of wine in my hand and keep it by my side, leave or I'm just gonna call the cops man, abuses me and swears as he walks out, check CCTV footage to print out his photo, what I see fucking terrifies me, as I was standing at the door, there was someone behind me, can't tell exactly what it is, but the guy has what appears to be one of those big, forearm length, screwdrivers at his right side, he quietly moved right behind me as I confronted this dude and was looking at him, that's why the dude was shaking his head, he was telling his buddy not to murder me, was actually kind of thankful in hindsight, but fuck them man, lesson learned, always assumed there were more people outside if people were robbing the inside, lesson learned, have room behind you to move, but Jesus you need to know what's there. Be me with 12 or 13 years old. I was on holidays, so with a group of friends we planned a camping in the middle of some farms, crops and that shit, we decided to sleep that night inside an abandoned farm in its second floor, OFC we were in the middle of the night talking and sharing funny stories and that sort of things, we heard a sound outside the house, like someone walking in the crops and getting closer to the farm, my friend told us to stop talking and paid attention to the footsteps, he was getting closer, was like in the living room in the one's floor, my friend decided to have a look to see who's inside the house, he descends from the stairs, and when he is almost on the first floor whatever was there screamed horribly, not even a fucking human scream, after listening to the scream, immediately we ran like crazy and jumped from the roof, then we see this figure looking at us from inside the house, we decided to move on and ended sleeping next to the road, the next day we returned to that farm approx at 10 to 11 am because my friend didn't took his phone from there before we began to run, we see these human like footsteps, friend has now his phone so we were about to leave the farm, Immediately after he takes his cell phone we heard how something smashed brutally a door and closed it. Start to run again immediately and return to the town San Gil, Santander, Colombia. Be at doctors for routine prostate exam. Have a new doctor because guy that I've been seeing for decades finally retired. New guy has me get up and turn around on the gurney per standard procedure. Puts on his gloves and applies the medical lube. Starts getting to work. Process is a little more painful than usual. Assuming it's because the new guy just isn't as well practiced as old doctor, after a bit of silence, doctor tries to start up some small talk to pass the time, small talk goes on for a while, then he finally starts to really work into my prostate, doctor says something to the effect of, it's natural to have an erection during this part of the process, confused, I tell the doc, but I don't have an erection, doctor just laughs, while still prodding my prostate, and says, oh, I wasn't talking about you, at that moment I feel both of his hands clasp my hips, notice that there's still something digging into my prostate, realize doctor is balls deep in my ass, feel my ass get flooded with cum right as I turn around to look at him, leave doctor's office in silence, 
be home later that night, see a ghost and get spooked, get on, x, and post about it never again, x. Get ready guys shit is spooky, be me 12 years old, have family relatives over for thanksgiving, after everyone is done eating family decides to talk and catch up, decide to play tag with relatives my age inside big house, youngest cousin is it and counts to 60, every kid for himself, decide to hide in bathroom specifically the tub, hide in there for a good 5 minutes, hear door open, hear voice but not kid, it sounds like my old aunt, she is here to take a shit, prepare to shit my pants, curl into fetal positions to not be discovered ninja style, unsits on toilet and start to unleash toxic hell, along with some unholy turkey farts, I cover my ears trying not to listen to any of this, it doesn't stop, I want to leave but I can't be caught, am crying and because the smell and the noise, she finishes, am left there to rot in the bathroom until coast is clear, I come back out and then they ask where I was, I don't want to play anymore, mfw. See an article about ISIS using Telegram to recruit, decide to track down the baddies and convince them to stop being terrorists, go to every San nigger search engine and look for pro-ISIS terms and the word Telegram, find potential Telegram groups, get a Telegram account, requires my phone number to verify account, sounds right.jpg, log on to ISIS Telegram group, hi guys greater than room go silent, start getting email notifications, WTF? Someone is trying to access your Facebook account. MFW Telegram displayed my phone number to the ISIS group who was able to simply enter those numbers into Facebook search to find my account, even though I had all of my Facebook set to extremely private, including my phone number, MFW Facebook just shows your account when you look up your phone number even if your phone number is set to private, go ahead try it, MFW within 10 seconds ISIS was able to find out my phone number, full name, and city I live in immediately deleted Telegram, Facebook, and Twitter. Emailed Telegram support to find out if my phone number was indeed displayed to ISIS, they still haven't replied. Been months. I've written some tutorials on various websites and such. My full name is out there and very associated with my hometown. Paranoia got to me and I ended up moving several states away from my hometown. I quit smoking and I'm currently exercising, so I can run slash fight, and for the first time in my life I'm seriously considering buying a handgun. After this shit. I realize just how much identifying information is on the internet for some of us. Like. I would have to go into witness protection with my entire family to ever feel safe again. I'm now taking steps to unhook from Google and most of the rest of the web, but it's going to be hard and take months to years before I fully transition to VPN and Tor browsing, etc. I've never received one of those Facebook login warnings in several years of having a FB account. And it happened immediately after I logged into that chat room. I still don't know for sure if that's what happened, but it was way too much of a coincidence to ignore and Telegram's dick sucking support still hasn't responded to let me know if they exposed my cell phone number to terrorists. Sure hope my family that I had to abandon doesn't get murdered by ISIS slash 10. 10 years ago, family moves into new house, great house. Parents couldn't believe how cheap it was. Weird things start happening a month after we move in. Hear creaking noises upstairs like someone is walking around. When nobody is there. Dog keeps watching something invisible move around. Always acts nervous when upstairs. Inexplicable puddles of water appear on upstairs bathroom floor overnight. Weirdness starts escalating over the next few weeks. Here drain in upstairs tub gurgling at night. Puddles on floor get bigger but we can never find where the water is coming from. Start seeing shadows walk past doorways. See movement out of the corner of your eye. But nothing is there. Dog refuses to go upstairs at all now pissed himself in terror and ran when I tried to carry him upstairs one night, start hearing whispering at night, after a couple months of this creepy shit. She appeared, roughly mid-teens, transparent, and naked, she would appear at night, but only if you were alone, never moved, never said anything, just stared at you, left a puddle wherever she stood, my sister ran screaming out of the house more than once, freaked me out too, my parents slept in the same bed, naturally, so they were rarely alone at night and didn't see her at first, they decide this shit's real and do some research, ask neighbors, look up records at county courthouse and library, etc. House's original owners had a teenage daughter who slipped in the tub and drowned in the late 80s. They didn't want to be where she died and moved shortly afterward. House went through a series of owners, none lasting more than a year, and finally sat empty for six years until we bought it for what we thought was a steal. Decide there's no way we're putting up with ghostly bullshit. Call a priest to do an exorcism, he never believed us, but he humored us anyway, didn't work, 
see-through girl was still ruining our floors with puddles every night, call the local psychic, she did a seance, talked in a fake pirate voice, then a fake little girl voice, then demanded money, kicked her ass to the curb, tried all kinds of shit we read on the internet, burning sage, holy water, lemons, etc., none of it got rid of ghost girl, eventually decide to just suck it up and live with it, parents sleep together, so they almost never see her, sister is always staying at a friend's house when she can manage it, meaning I have to sit in my room, alone, all night, with some wet ghost staring at me the entire time, fun, one night, my sister is at a friend's house, again, and my parents are out late, so I'm home alone, bored as hell, flipping through channels, trying to ignore ghost girl dripping on the floor and staring at me, suddenly realize I have a naked chick in the room and, if you ignore the fact that she's see-through, she's pretty easy on the eyes, a, fuck it, zip fap fap fap, she vanished right then and there, never appeared again, no more creepy noises, no more puddles, not a single sign of ghostly activity, bitch didn't even let me finish and that's how I exorcised a ghost from my house. Be driving home from a work trip with my coworker Mark, be late night around 11.30 pm, the road is leading through a forest, no other cars in sight, cloudy sky too so pitch fucking black, Mark, hey and on I need to take a piss, K, stop the car, he gets out, Walls about 20 meters into the forest I'm not sure how far since I can't see shit from the can. Hear him trip on some stick or some shit and curse, laugh at his shy bladder, next time just take a piss next to the car you retard. Didn't really said it out loud though. Mark finishes pissing, walks out of the forest and gets back in the car. Continue driving for 10 minutes. Mark just silently stares out of the window. Suddenly my cell phone rings. Pull out my cell phone and look the display to see the name of the caller. It's Mark. Cold sweat immediately floods my entire body, every muscle clenched, start shitting myself, oh god the thing who got back into the car with me isnt mark, put the phone to my ear and accept the call to not look suspicious, for a second consider just jumping out of the fucking car, remember I have a switchblade in my pocket, fuck should I go for it? Hear a voice from the phone, it's mark, it's gf, that retard left his phone at home and so she was calling me to make sure the work trip went okay. Close off the stream of soft stool pouring down my underpants, Mark will never know how close he actually came to have a knife in his neck because his coworker is apparently mentally damaged retard. Be me, be in high school, be just before Christmas break, classes sitting around reading something, relatively quiet radical, start hearing bells coming down the hall, hear a few people whispering about it, Santa, did the school rent a Santa impersonator? This grabs the entire class's attention, bell jingling intensifies. Everybody staring at the door now, waiting to see Santa walk by, nope, just a faggot goth kid with huge black pants from Hot Topic, the bells we heard were the chains on his pants, the entire class goes up in laughter when they see this, mfw that kid saw an entire classroom laugh at him because of how dumb he looked. Travel to a small suburban town to live in my aunt's basement, she moved there recently after it had been abandoned for 5 years, in the basement, there is furniture from the original owner. A large hat stand with a fedora on it is in the corner, notice that it is tipped, this bothers me, so I fix it, when I come back, the fedora is tipped again, getting a glass of water from the kitchen late at night, step in something slimy, when my eyes readjust, I notice it's spaghetti, tell my Andy about this next morning, she didn't make spaghetti that night or ever or late at night, soft jazz can be faintly heard coming from the walls, apparently, there was a young man who used to live in the basement who was so enlightened by his own intelligence, HW transcended this physical plane. Are there spooky stories from Italian territory? The whole country is full of Italians. Only a few months ago, start hearing things downstairs, kinda like footsteps and the like, figure it's just the pipes settling or whatever and try to ignore it, sounds start getting a little less ambiguous, Sound of drawers opening and closing start, snap awake and start freaking out, think I'm being robbed, grab the gun I keep nightstand, old 38 I inherited from my dad, slowly open the door, trying not to make a sound, can hear much clearer now, definitely someone downstairs, start slowly making my way downstairs, hands are shaking hard, got a white knuckle grip on the revolver, finally get to the bottom, whoever is in the kitchen didn't seem to hear me, raise gun and quickly leap into the kitchen. It's not a fucking home invader, standing there in my fucking kitchen is what looks like a woman in a white dress and stringy black hair falling over her face, absolutely terrified right now, still have enough sense to know shooting won't do much to help me, 
for some reason slash x slash begins to rush through my head. Especially all those threads about people raping ghosts, I'm not thinking straight, adrenaline is pumping and my my penis begins to get a little erect, without even thinking let out a scream and lunge forward, tackling the ghost to the ground and violently pulling up its dress, quickly pull down my pajama pants and start thrusting forward against her crotch, penis eventually finds its way into the hole, start violently thrusting while screaming the whole time, hands still tightly grasping the revolvers while the other grabs the ghost's hair, don't last very long, come in less than a minute, heart is throbbing as I just barely stop myself from collapsing, ghost doesn't disappear like in all the green texts, oddly enough, finally my panting lessens enough to hear a very quiet sobbing and mumbling, stop, please stop over and over again, realize I'd forgotten my sister was staying with me for the weekend well, at least she doesn't sleepwalk anymore. Recently moved, new school, made some friends, hanging out during lunch, friend runs up guys the dildo banditos have struck again, the wah? Everybody gets up and runs to a locker that has a dildo super glued to it, it's mine, I wonder whose locker it is poor guy I hope he has some good friends, explain it's my locker, they start treating me like I'm about to die, new friends avoid me the rest of the day, so confused, walking home from school get jumped by three kids wearing masks and sombreros, they beat the shit out of me with dildos, to this day I'm still really confused and disturbed by the whole event.